slow learner, moderate learners, and fast learners. Are our classes characterized by three, three different kinds of learners? <coughs> so that is one reflection. Any other reflections, please? Three different talents. Three different talents. talents. Oh, great. Three different talents. So every, every one of them has its own unique talent. Great. Attitude huh? Attitudes also are different. Different. Very good. Very good reflections. The perception. Huh? Perception. Perceptions are different. Different backgrounds. Different backgrounds. Different backgrounds. Excellent. Different backgrounds. Further. Go further. Any other reflections? All reflections. Association there with you. Pardon? Association there with you. Yes, association. There within. Yeah? Within. 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 And the pace of learning or yes, the pace of learning. The big so slow learners, moderate learners, and fast learners. Yeah. Interest Their interests also are different. Their interests also are different. Environment from which they come also. Yeah, yes, is different. Now why focus on the learner? Now we can see. I am not going to the details. Inductive and deductive, active and reflective, sequential and global. Some students will be able to understand only by step by step if you explain. They will not be able to see all the concepts in a single, um, what is called a slide. Okay. So, some students will be there. So we have to see the requirements of all kinds of uh, students. Let us proceed further. These three are most important for any teacher to be a pupil. Without these three, today the teacher will not be able to do justice. Students will not be able to relate the teacher in high esteem. All the three are very important. Today, when I say technology, this is used in teaching, ICT used in teaching, that technology I am referring to, right, so online, using videos, PPTs, animations and all that. So, when we say subject knowledge mastery, what do we mean by that? You formulate the courses. Up to create level. <coughs> In terms of Bloom's taxonomy, you have formulated the course up to create level. Then the teacher has equipped only up to apply level. That means the course objectives are there. The teacher should be equipping at one cognitive level higher than the Course subjectives. If the course objective is the highest level is the upper level, the teacher must have equipped with up to analyzer. If the course objectives are up to evaluate level, the teacher must have equipped up to create. What does it mean? The teacher must have before starting the course itself, the teacher must have analyzed several case studies, must have solved. Hundreds of unknown problems, hundreds of real time problems. Right. Only then the teacher will be able to relate with the, uh, I mean, the subject at the higher quality level. Then appropriate, appropriate teaching methods, that is pedagogy. And then uh, technology, in today's scenario, all these three are equally important. From the day one of starting the course, the teacher should be conscious of the course objectives or learning outcomes of the course. Should be continuously in, in her mind. One, two, three, four, five, six. Normally, there won't be more than six course objectives. 
are unit objectives if you are dealing with a particular unit. Yes, these are the unit objectives. Accordingly, in order to achieve these, the teacher has to plan strategies for active learning. So, there should be perfect match, perfect mapping between the course learning outcomes and strategies. This is, these are the teaching strategies. In order to achieve this, the teacher has to plan accordingly the appropriate uh, activities, appropriate teaching aids, appropriate softwares, appropriate case studies, consciously. Then, for each course objective, an assignment, assessment, all must be planned before starting to, to teach the course. So all these three in your teaching plan itself, it should be taken care of. Every week there must be an assignment. That assignment, that means every week means three hours you may have covered our course for a particular course. There should be assignment. So whatever learning outcome is there, that should be for practice. We give assignment and then maybe at the end of month in the form of unit test, that is formative assessment at the end of the mid-semester examination, end-semester examination, summative assessment. All you have to think together. Nothing is separate. It's not that we, we don't remember the course objectives. We teach something only based on the syllabus. Syllabus is different from course of course of things. You should be conscious of syllabus also. But course outcomes are very, very important. Accordingly, we formulate our strategy very consciously with a plan. So then let us see what is this active learning since of uh, quite a few years, quite uh, from 10 to 20 years, this active learning uh, is uh, uh, talked about. Any instructional method that engages students in the learning process requires students to do meaningful learning activities <laughs> and think about what they are doing in the classroom. Do meaningful learning activities and think about what they are doing. This thinking is very, very important. It's not doing activity mechanically. Thinking, reflecting, to learn. Every activity should be planned with a desired learning outcome. The teacher facilitates implementation of the activities. Teacher gives some problem to solve. That's an activity. Teacher conducts a quiz to answer. That is an activity. Teacher organizes some discussion. That is an activity where students participate. Then another definition. Anything course related that all students in a class session are called upon to do other than simply watching, listening and taking notes. Watching, listening, and taking notes is not activity. This is Richard M. Felder. <coughs> Please go to his uh, website and read all his articles. There are many articles by Richard Felder. I was. Please reflect upon this. Please reflect upon this. The learning term. Speaking with that, which which method is the uh, best? <coughs> Practice by doing. And teach others, that is, give a seminar, seminar, seminars by the students. Immediate use of learning. Suppose you declare that if the student learns Java, immediately I am going to give the job. All the students, they will put in extra time and effort and they learn Java. <coughs> if you declare, if we provide the students' opportunity for interaction, they will come out with many, many new things. The teacher actually hasn't, hasn't got to do anything. <coughs> yeah. 
students themselves. Students themselves. That is uh, even not only dyslexia or uh, dyslexia <laughs> syndrome, even normal children also. That is what is called peer learning. Peer learning. Peer learning is one of the best yes, strategies. Yes. There is no doubt about it. The reason is, the reason is, the student knows yeah. how, how best we may think, we may not be able to understand all 60 children. Yes. Whereas, the neighboring the student knows how the, his friend will be able to understand. And then there is wavelength matching. And then there is no inhibition of person for asking clarifications, questions, etc. Always tutorial. Tutorial yes. is the best yes. way of instruction. Wherein it is not the teacher teaches. You make the students into pairs or threes, groups. Then you give the problems. By discussing among themselves, they come out with solutions. But grouping is very important. So that you put at least one student who will be able to scaffold. See, scaffolding is an environmental technique. Yes. Scaffolding means you pay, you you increase the challenge level step by step. That means simple things you teach first, then after they understand, increase the complexity a little bit, increase the complexity a little bit like that. So in tutorials, when you do the peer uh, uh, teaching. This is scaffolding also takes place automatically, right? So, and the gap between the two students is much less when compared to the gap between the teacher and the student. However, much we may say, teachers are teachers and students are students. There is always a gap which is created by our traditional societies, right? They will not be so friendly and so fearless with you, whereas they will be fearless with their peers to practice by doing. What is the least effective method? But how our classrooms are filled mostly with the Yeah, yeah. There are so many issues. So many issues. I think before you came, we have discussed the challenges and issues. So many large classes, 70 students in the class, heterogeneous groups, no prerequisite knowledge. We are struggling actually, we are struggling. The teachers are struggling, immediately. Uh, am I right? See, you cannot avoid lecturing. See, intermittently, you use the activities, again lecturing will be there. Lecturing is like a thread, like a thread which connects all other activities. But only lecturing, the students will not be able to learn, right? So, today, because of the use of information and communication technology, if we appropriately make use of it, many things are possible. But many things are possible, provided their effective domain is touched. The students' effective domain is touched. Provided the students are with you, See, they are learners. If they are with you, together, wonders can be done. So let us proceed further. The best, one of the best strategies of learning is through concrete experience. That is the best way. So, when the student has undergone the concrete experience facilitated by the teacher, Immediately, concept formation does not take place. Thinking should happen based on the experience. Thinking process will go on spontaneously. <coughs> right? Consciously and unconsciously also thinking process goes on in the student. The brain starts thinking about it. So only to thinking, that is what is called reflection. Based on the experience, reflection is the followed by the experience, then conceptualization takes place. And this conceptualization may not be in its complete form. It may be in a hazy form. It may not be nearer to the reality. 
it may not be very close to the real concept. Some conceptualization happens. <laughs> After this, then you practice active experimentation, either in the form of problem solving, if it is a laboratory course or there is a possibility of uh, designing the experiment related to the theoretical concept, whatever concept he has learned, he subjects it to the experimentation, then in this process again he undergoes experience. So first experience and the second experience may not be identical. The second experience may be much more deeper, it may lead to greater insight than the first experience. Then further reflection, again conceptualization. So it, it, it decides out. So after some time, then the student formulates the concept close to the reality. When that conceptualization is close to the reality, then he will be able to apply those concepts to solve the problems. He will be able to apply those concepts to analyze the case studies. He will be able to apply those concepts to design new things. So the learning cycle, the student, what is important is the student should be uh, facilitated to undergo through this learning cycle by our uh, teaching uh, strategy. Then, yes, so only just <laughs> one or two months ago, I have taken uh, this quotation and because there are many commerce and management uh, faculty here, I thought it is appropriate to show here. We cannot come to that to learning as all the centers and other models only, truly there is one or two of classroom. If you do it right, you can see the motivation, the enthusiasm, the sparks and the eagerness to learn and teach in your classroom. Active learning can. You see, here also, when you are participating actively, when you are giving your own idea, when you are giving your own opinion, what is happening? You are totally focusing on it. You are completely in it. And what, what is the next thing you are enjoying? Are you not enjoying it? <coughs> when you are expressing yourself with a new idea into your perception? <coughs> and then what, what is the next thing? <coughs> there is a social recognition. Right? So yes, these, these students are able to participate. So with all this, then this motivation, then enthusiasm, 